Welcome back guys, time for another fictionalhead.com quick tutorial. Uh, today we're in Illustrator and I wanted to show you a <clears throat> really easy way to make more uh, kind of dynamic brush strokes than what is uh, readily available in Illustrator. Um, this one popped to mind when I was working on my font which will probably be coming up in a Let's Make Art episode soon. but. Um, if you're making shapes, like in this instance we'll be doing uh, a letter form, but this would work also for illustrations and things. If you're making shapes and you try to use Illustrator's brush controls for um, you know, roundness, angle, and things like that, you can get some interesting things like kind of like that, but they, they lack any real dynamic nature because they're being generated kind of off the angle of the line and stuff. So what I tend to do when I'm working with things like this is make my own brush strokes. And it's a lot easier than it sounds. Usually I just start with a uh, black circle. And then if you take one of the points and drag it way out, you now get kind of a nice rounded end. And then down here you get a nice rounded end too. Um, and you can stretch it even further or you know collapse it down, whatever. But this would basically be <clears throat> like if a pen were to draw it, this would be where the pen lays contact with the paper and then as your stroke gets lighter, it gets thinner. So once you have that shape, it's just as easy as dragging it into your brush palette. And for this particular brush, it would be an art brush. Um, I'll explain pattern brush in a, in a minute. Scatter brushes are for like paint splatter kind of things where it's kind of scattered all over the place, more random. But once you've picked your art brush, um, it'll pop open this dialog here, and it tells which way do you want the stroke to be going, um, left to right, right to left. I usually just continue that because it's easy to flip it um, later. And then if you set the method to tint, that way you'll be able to use your swatches to change it. Um, and then just hit OK, and it pops into the box over here. And if we apply that, to our um, A, you can see that we've got a nice stroke and it goes whichever direction you drew your line. So if I click there to there and draw it, it's going to go that way. And if I click, you know, here, oops, here to here and then apply it, it's going to go that way. So that's usually how I control what the direction is. You can also just flip your brush and dump it back into your. Um, palette so that you have one where it goes one way and one where it goes the other way if you want it to be easily flippable. But by doing things like that you can make really dynamic brush strokes um, for illustrations like even if you were drawing a character or something and you wanted to use those for uh, your line work like it's a really um, kind of swashy pen you're using when you're when you're drawing um, you know, they work for anything. It just it leapt to mind when I was working on the font. But one other thing you can do is if you turn your grid on and um, do snap to grid, but not snap to point. Snap to point's real nasty. Um, and make a shape. Like in this case, I'm just going to go with a nice long rectangle and then fill that with black and then turn snap to grid back off because we don't I just wanted to make sure that the beginning and the end began and ended at the exact same spot so if you do that and then add some extra points to your um, to the edge of your line here so that you can manipulate it and you make kind of slightly irregular lines like this so that it wobbles but just make sure that the beginning and the end do line up exactly like that. If you do that and then drag that into your brush palette and set it as a pattern brush because it's something that's going to repeat um, and then you just leave these settings at what they are. You can flip this to tint so you can use your um, use your colors but these are like for what happens at corner joints and things like that but once you've got this kind of a brush um, let me turn the grid back off. 
if you were to do a circle for like an O in a font or any sort of drawn thing where you want uh, the end to close, um, these really fancy brushes are never going to close. They're going to run into each other like that. But if you have one that you created that has both a beginning and end that are exactly the same and then you set it as a pattern brush, when you apply that, it's hard to tell there that that actually worked, but you'll see that it's got the irregular stroke that this had, but it's looping because the beginning and the end are perfectly fine. So just to show you more obviously what's going on here, if I were to put some points on here that stick out a little more like that, and then dump that into my brushes, make it a pattern brush. Um, you'll see that every time the brush is repeating, those um, points are sticking out like that. So you can use these tips to make much more dynamic strokes than just the common brush settings will allow. And they can really spruce up your artwork or your fonts or whatever you're working on. So if you've gotten any uh, questions, just leave them to me in the comments or Facebook, Twitter, whatever, and I uh, hope it was helpful.